Music licensing reimagined. Music license. Licensing reimagined. Roller Derby is played in increments called jams. Each jam lasts up to two minutes. Both teams field up to five skaters at the start of the jam. Four of these skaters are called blockers, and one is called the jammer. The jammer wears a helmet cover with a star on it and scores points for the team. The blockers are playing both offense and defense at the same time, and together they make up what is called the pack. The two jammers start each jam behind the pack and must get through all of these skaters for an initial pass before they can begin to score points. When the initial pass is complete, a jammer can score one point for every opponent they pass with their hips. 
The first jammer out of the pack legally is declared lead jammer, which means they can end the jam any time they want, before the two minutes are up. Sounds easy, right? PDA bracket. Arizona Rising taking on the Elevated All-Stars. Hey, there's still time to put your vote in for the MVPs of the weekend. There will be MVPs awarded in both brackets. These are the overall awards, so check it out on um, on the stream. We'll put the link in, and if you're in-house, there's QR codes all around this joint. So scan it, make your vote, be a part of the process. <laughs> Friends, help us. Help us. I'm Lokita Bonita. I will be joined momentarily by the lovely and fabulous Punky Pie in the best pants ever. Got a couple of birthdays we're celebrating in the house. The one and only bad habit, Barbie, celebrating her birthday with us. Happy birthday, Barbie girl. And also skating today. I think she's skating. Rage. Rage and Bajan also celebrating a birthday today. So happy birthday to Rage and Bajan. Make sure you say happy birthday to both those fabulous, fabulous folks. And uh, I think we should get rolling with the rosters. All right, we're going to start with our host league, Arizona Roller Derby. We have number 10, Frida, number 16, Jess Monroe, 172, Pikachu, 2, Mimi Mahler, 264, Velasco Sauce, 27, Babe Toven, 31, 2x4s, 33, Mecca, 38, Colette Razorcat, 5, Sunny Ono, 574, Axel, 602 Phoenix, 709 Kiwi, 710 Gail Satan, and 718 Rage in Beijing. All right, and it is my privilege and honor to run through the roster for Elevated Roller Derby skating today in the white jerseys. Number 11, Killer Queen. 1226 Rekka. 1313 Horticia Madams. Number 15, Harley Darling. 187 Doom De Doom. Number 248, oh, just gonna scooch past you there. 321, Rocket. 329, Triple Axle Rose. Number 34, Fighting Girlfriend. 414, Lost in Your Thighs. Number 45, Nikki Six Shooter. 484, Gemini. Number 9, Kells Inferno. 909, Tsunami. And 999, Amanda Jamadinya. And our official crew for this game features Doesn't Matter, Darth Bling, Misbehaving, uh, Mr. Nitro, Goran Browncoat, Sirius Hertz, V Ginger Ninja, Cyan, Notorious, Rough Draft, Rivendell, Whoopsie Daisy, Genius, Sushi, Miss Murder, Thunder Down Under, and Nitro Glitterin. All right, and we are just about ready. Less than a minute to go until we get back to this live derby action. It has been a full weekend. We have already seen 11 games of derby played between the two brackets, plus that bonus mashup last night, if you caught it. And I, I do believe the, the Haboobs versus Flash Floods totally uh, brought in, called to existence the storm that we saw last night just roll in during that game. So. Uh, Big points for that, I think. And that was a tight game. So good one. If you didn't catch it to watch later, it'll be up on, on YouTube, available on Twitch for a couple weeks as well. And here it is, the five seconds. Bam, we're at it. That is Fighting Girlfriend with the star for Elevated facing off against Kiwi for Arizona Rising. Both teams just hanging out back there at the Rehab Lab Arizona Jam Line. Kiwi making a break for it. Does get to that Clover Cup pivot line. Now with one to beat. Pat getting pretty spread out. So Nikki Six Shooter just go ahead. Says, all right, you got it. And Kiwi out as lead now 
looking to get some points. We have had a successful star pass. Horticia now jamming four elevated. So Horticia approaching the pack pack, starts to move forward, puts on that pressure. Kiwi able to get two points as we start the game. So two point jam in favor of Arizona here in the early moments of today's game. All right, and heading into jam two, we have Axel jamming for Arizona Rising and Losting Your Thighs for Elevated. Um, Losting Your Thighs getting some offensive help and tiptoeing down that line, but gets a cup call as Axel gets out and has that power jam. Some beautiful communication happening between Jammer and Pack, and so they do some great offense for that first scoring pass. And once again, Arizona's really capitalizing on this power jam, working together to hit some offense for Axel as the pivot Mimi is sent to the box. All right, we do have Elevated Jammer has now been released and looking to complete their initial pass as Axel completes a third scoring pass now, currently 12 points on the board in this jam. And with that, Lost in Your Thighs has completed that initial pass and is now scoring eligible. And Axel listens to the bench to call it off right as Mimi is released from the box. So we're going to start this next jam, two full packs. Big jam there for Arizona Rising. 15 points added to that scoreboard and we are just three minutes into the game. Elevated thou no, thou no, no. Oh my gracious. Now, Good though, I, know. I'm, I am a little tired. I do have my tea, though. Uh, Gemini on the line for Elevated. Gemini, a very powerful and jukey skater with a lot of um, skills in that toolbox. So Gemini looking to uh, make some moves, but not if Frida and the Arizona blockers have anything to say about it. Frida going to the inside, but just getting uh, schooled there by Axel and Killer Queen. Nope, but a little space off that line. And Frida does get out first, but slight step out and recycled back. Frida is lead. Gemini now, though, almost out at the top, gets knocked out, recycled back by Razor Cat, then met by a two by force. I think that was like a 12 by force, knocking Gemini to the outside. And Frida continuing to push forward. Looking to get some space. Uh, birthday girl Rage getting in there and opening things up. Gemini, though, out of the pack. Going to force that call off. Man, that was a battle jam. And there were no points. But truly, that, those were some hard working jammers. Punky, how does that feel when you're the jammer in that situation? It can definitely be a rough place to be. <laughs> like, those walls looked very solid, and both of those jammers were working hard to get any ground they had. Yeah, and those are both jammers who can really put up a lot of points. Absolutely. So well All right, and speaking of jammers, we have Fighting Girlfriend for Elevated jamming against Mecca for Arizona, and it looks like Mecca is heading to the box with a back block penalty. So this is a pen, uh, power jam in favor of Elevated. Arizona does also have one blocker in the box, so three blockers to try and prevent this power jam.
And Fighting Girlfriend is able to fight through Mimi at the top and complete that initial pass is now lead just as Mecha is released from the box. With a big hit out by Mimi Mahler, and they're dry, drawing Fighting Girlfriend back and Mecha is still continuing to fight against Elevated's pack. All right, and that is four more points, or four points on the board for Elevated, so Fighting Girlfriend putting the first points on the, uh, on the board for this game as Mecca completes her initial pass and is now eligible to score as well. All right, and Fighting Girlfriend decides to hold Arizona scoreless for that jam, picking up four more and calling it off. That's 8-0 jam in favor of Elevated, bringing our score to 17 Arizona, eight Elevated All-Stars. And for those of you looking forward to the next game, I know somebody in the Twitch chat is, and probably other folks here, the next game is gonna be open gender also for third and fourth place between Clown Town and Cal Squad. That game will start at noon Arizona time, which is right now the same as California time, just in case you're wondering. Also, Oregon, Washington. <laughs> and Gail Satan out first, picks up lead, lost in your thighs with that star in hand for Elevated. Uh, considering that star pass, although the pivot was in the box, now back out on the track though and looking to offer some of offensive assistance. Gail Satan skating through on that outside lane. Nice chase down there by Kells Inferno. And number 909, Tsunami of Elevated. For so far on the scoreboard for Satan, looks like gonna be four more now. Yep, I see all four fingers in the air. So eight points so far. And we have had a successful star pass, so doom de doom That's a really fun name to say also. doom de doom now jamming for Elevated. Four more points for Satan. Another four as the rest of the pack is hanging out up in turns three and four. Birthday girl Rage Invasion at the top of that tripod or was now. That's Razor Cat. Razor Cat and Rage both teaming up to block Doom. Prevent Doom from getting out and giving enough time for Satan to get four more points. I think this is a 20. Yep, there it is. 20 point jam for Gail Satan and Arizona Rising. All right, we have Kiwi on the line for Arizona and Gemini for an Elevated All-Stars heading into, I think it's gonna be Jam 6. All right, and with that whistle, Jam 6 is off. Gemini with a decisive start pushing right up to the Clover Cup 2025 pivot line. As Kiwi fights against all four of elevated blockers in the back. Kiwi finds some momentum and is now able to push out in front, but both packs still really strong together and looking to get some momentum. Captain Velasco Sauce offers Kiwi some offensive help, but unfortunately she is hit to the outside as Gemini is able to get some momentum. From about a half track, almost a full minute, and there is still no lead established in this jam.
Speaking of places you don't want to be as a jammer, this is probably one of them. <laughs> These are just two very strong, tight packs working together right now. We have 30 seconds left in this jam. Phoenix is coming back to give Key some offensive help as the rest of Arizona blockers continue to hold down Gemini and, oh, thought Gemini's thought she saw an opening on the inside but got hit to the back as Kiwi is breaking apart their, jam, their blockers but also it's hit to the outside. I think we are going to have a full two minute jam with no lead. Let's see. And there we did, full two minutes. Look at that defense, y'all. That was amazing. I mean, both these teams are fielding some really beautiful blockers out there with some strong walls and great communication, staying together, anticipating each other's moves, and also just the chit-chat chatter so that they can uh, keep doing the thing. Both teams with one in the penalty box. So no advantage, just, just a little short there on the track, but it won't be too long until they rejoin. Rekka wearing that star for Elevated, Axel for Arizona Rising. Axel able to break out, gets up on those toe stops on that outside lane and is through. Oh no, got a cut track call. That means we have a power jam. Power jam. I believe this is our first power jam of the game. No, I'm wrong. I believe that I just said something that was not actually true fact. And thankfully, my partner over here, Punky, knew it. So <laughs> rewind. Power jam opportunity for elevated Rekka has removed the helmet cover, however, and uh, looking to push out. Not some great bridging happening by Arizona there to keep that play alive and great penalty kill because Axel is now also back on the track. Absolutely. Well done. Just another example of how strong the blocking is has been out on the track and honestly all weekend long Arizona's blocking has been really impressive in each game that they've played. Axel back into the pack looking to score some points here being shut down by uh, Amanda Jamadinya and Someone else, Killer Queen. Good gracious. And that's the jam, full two minute jam. And how many points after two minutes? Four. Sheesh, that's the, didn't we have, we had a full two minute jam right before that that resulted in zero. Zero. Because there was no lead. <laughs> Both Zero teams are points. just turn up that aggression, really locking <laughs> in together. <laughs> yeah. Making it a game. All right, we have Frida jamming for Arizona against Fighting Girlfriend for Elevated. Hear some whistles, so let's give a second for these calls to happen. And Frida picks up Lee. Oh. Frida picks up a cut track call just as Fighting Girlfriend also gets a penalty. So we're gonna get a little jammer do -si do in the penalty box. All right, both jammers have now been released and since both received a penalty, we're gonna get another two minute jam. That's three in a row. Yeah. And Frida sees that opening on the inside, takes advantage of it right off the bat. Looks like Arizona's defense is able to slow down Fighting Girlfriend up top, who is getting some offensive help from Harley Darling.
Again, some great bridging and blocking by Arizona. Uh, fighting Girlfriend just has Sauce and Pikachu to beat, and she pushes them out to complete that initial pass. And there's some great offense by Babe to get Frida out on that scoring pass. And it looks like Arizona has lost blocker Velasco to the box as Fighting Girlfriend also completes a scoring pass. Big hit out to the outside by Axel, draws Frida back as Fighting Girlfriend comes up to get some more points. And Frida is able to find opening on the inside to put up four more points for Arizona. There's about 15 seconds left in this jam. Let's see if she can get any more on the board as Fighting Girlfriend also pushes through. All right, that is a, another two-minute jam. It's, looks like it's going to be a 12-10 jam in favor of Arizona, bringing our score 53 to 18. Shout out in the Twitch chat to all of Boulder County watching this game in their Airbnb and shouting at the television. And thanks, Chai, for uh, recording it all and sharing with us in the Twitch chat. <laughs> Mecca wearing that star for Arizona Roller Derby and lost in your thighs for Elevated. Mecca up by that Clover Cup pivot line, slightly stepping out, sees it. I saw that little shrug by Mecca like, oh, and Mecca recycles back to the Rehab Lab Arizona jam line. Thighs all the way up by that Clover Cup pivot line almost pushed out by those Arizona blockers. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mecca finds some space and is able to get out in that outside lane. Nice chase down though by Elevated's blockers. Mecca though still out, does still able to get out, gets lead, now ready to score some points, but being denied right now by Amanda Jamadinia who is just tracking back and forth across the track right with Mecca, joined by Harley. And I think that's Doom also there. And Mecca continuing, though, to make some forward motion. Looks like Thighs has taken off the helmet cover and is looking to either get out of the pass, star stash, star pass, not sure. Well. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe an attempt that's <laughs> denied by the pivot. Maybe not. Maybe that's part of the stashy stash part. But anyway, Mecca is out and has picked up four points. Continuing to come back and going to re-engage the pack with just about 12 seconds left in the jam. Looks like we are going to see another two-minute jam. This one by choice, I suppose you could call it that. Uh, in an effort to get more points. Two. Man, six points in that. I mean, I just, wow. They're just so good. They're both, both teams are just so good. Yeah, the defense in this game has been so effective, really forcing these long jams and a lot of grinding. Hey, we have a team timeout. This team timeout is brought to you by the after party. The after party is going to be at the Brass Tap Verde. I think there's two locations, and so that's how they designate it. Um, it is on Wrecker Road in Gilbert, so pretty much where we are. From 8 to midnight, it is for 18 and over. They say, please bring your ID. So 18 and over at the Brass Tap. Uh, there are The address is in the AZRD socials. We'll be posting it up on the board so you can find it. But again, it's called the Brass Tap. And it's in Gilbert, the one that's not too far from here. So chickity check it out, y'all.
All right, and with that conclusion of the team timeout, we have Gemini jamming for Elevated against Gail Satan for Arizona. All right, Gemini is able to find some clearance on the inside. One more to beat Mimi Mahler, able to slow her down at the top and save that play so that Phoenix is able to, or excuse me, Gail Satan is able to get our lead jammer designation. Gemini not that far behind on a scoring pass as well. Ooh, all right. Satan looked to call it off to try and stop the points, but Gemini was too fast. It's going to be a two to one jam in favor of Arizona. Really well done there by Gemini and Elevated, keeping that pressure on and the scoring low for that jam. And here we are now. It is jam number 11. That is Kiwi with a star for Arizona Rising and Fighting Girlfriend for Elevated. Fighting Girlfriend pushing forward looking for an opening getting some offensive assistance there from harley but not quite enough to get all the way back as kiwi bounces back to the inside and now moves to the top of the pack but all of those elevated blockers in there making it hard razor jumping in to break things up a bit then rejoining uh, Killer Queen also on the offense there for, for Fighting Girlfriend and everybody kind of got sucked over to the outside lane and forgot that there was some inside space and Fighting Girlfriend got out, put the pressure on. Let's see, Kiwi got some points. No, no points on that jam, really well played. And that took, took a while for anybody to get out of the pack. Remember to check out all of our vendors who are still here today. There's time to get your tattoos. Check out Oh My Quad, visit Blue. All right, and Jam 12, we see Lost in Your Thighs, jamming for Elevated, and Axel for Arizona finds some clearance on the outside and picking up a lead jammer. And Lost in Your Thighs is about half track behind and picking up speed. All right, Axel is hit to the inside. Picks up one point for calling it off. Holding elevated scoreless. Nobody, it looks like that 187 penalty box is completely empty just the way we like it. Gemini with the star for Elevated. Frida for Arizona Rising. Frida off the line pretty quick, moving forward almost to that Clover Cup pivot line. Gemini still back at the Rehab Lab Arizona Jam line, but making progress, pushing forward. Couple skaters there bridging and Frida able to get out and get lead. Gemini has removed the helmet cover, looking to find some space. Gets knocked to the inside, recycled back. Looks like that's two by force there. Two by force and just Monroe. And a successful and sneaky stash pass to Axel. So Axel now jammer for elevated. Frida is through, has picked up Four points as Axel gets back to the pack and bouncing around, able to get through and also get four points. Frida gets knocked to the inside and calls it off. Did pick up two points though. So a 4-7 jam in favor of Arizona Rising. Your score right now 70 to 23 with just six minutes left here in the first half.
lots of love happening in the chat. We got a shout out for Axel. Axel's a beautiful jammer, so strong and so eloquent. Elegant. Excuse me. All right, and jamming in this jam, we have Rekka for Elevated pushing up and picking up a lead. And Mecca in the back. And Rekka is now back in the pack, quickly moving through, picking up four points as Mecca is looking to complete a star pass, or just the initial pass, star in hand. Big fall on the inside allows Rekka to take advantage of that open space, picking up four more points. Really riding this momentum, and it looks like we've had a successful star pass to Mimi Mahler, who is now a, the jammer for Arizona. Rekka doing some great edge work on the outside line, picking up four more points. It was a big jam for elevated all-stars and just what they needed right now. All right, it looks like Arizona is losing one blocker to the box for a penalty. And Rekka is just continuing to stride, trying to rack up as many points as she can. Mecca trying to do some offense or defense out of play, and that brings Rekka now to a 20-point jam. That's going to be the highest-scoring jam for Elevated in this game. Both teams doing a pretty good job of keeping that 187 penalty box pretty empty, looking at nine total penalties so far for Arizona and seven for Elevated. Nobody with more than two with just about three minutes left here in the first half of this game. <gasps> so exciting. Frida with the star for Arizona, fighting girlfriend. For Elevated. I love that name, Fighting Girlfriend. And also... It's actually Satan for Arizona. Oh, so bad. Thank, thank you so much. Too tall. Satan. Thank you for that correction, Punky. Man. Um, Satan is looking to get some space there on the outside lane. Gets knocked and then goes back and finds kind of a diagonal lane out and uh, takes it. Gets lead. Satan with lead. Fighting Girlfriend going for a shirt with their off Kells Inferno, but doesn't really make much progress. Kells looking to offer some offense and break things up there in this pack of Rage Invasion, Just Monroe, two by fours, and Razor Cat. Satan with another attempt to get through, gets knocked to the outside for the second time, is recycled back by Kells Inferno. Now getting back on the track. 40 seconds left in the jam. And Girlfriend is now out of the pack. Satan also through for all four, hearing chance of call it, call it from the bench and does so. Ending jam number 15 with about a minute and a half left here in the first half. And Elevated is going to start this jam with a pack advantage. Arizona lost one blocker to the block uh, right at the end of that jam. So it'll be a 3-4 packs on the track. You guys know what I meant by that. It's Sunday morning. It is, it is absolutely Sunday morning, and Lost in Your Thighs is jamming away for Elevated as Kiwi takes an opening on the outside to pick up Lead Jammer. Lost in Your Thighs uh, has Mimi Mahler and Velasco Sauce to beat, and 
who is hit to the inside. And so recycled back as Kiwi comes up to score some points. Fighting Girlfriend has now completed her initial score, or excuse me, Lost in Your Thighs has now completed initial scoring pass. So Kiwi decides to call it, keeping them scoreless. It is a 4-0 jam in favor of Arizona. So not a lot of time left there on the period clock. We'll see. I think we're going to get one more jam in before the half. Let's see what happens here. Our fabulous jam timer. Yep. Beep. There it is. That sound means we are in it for one more jam. We have Axel and Gemini. Gemini for Elevated pushing forward, getting to the top of the pack, but Axel finding space, powering through, or creating space, more like it, and getting through for lead. Gemini had removed that helmet cover. Oh man, nice chase down there by Razor, but both of them go out, so Gemini able to hop back up and pressure on. Jam is called. Uh, refs confirmed to see if um, might have been a point or two picked up at the end. Two. There it is. So we are going to go to halftime score 80 to 43 here on day three, final day of Monsoon Madness. These two teams competing for third and fourth place in the WFTDA bracket. Go ahead and take a quick break. It will be back in about uh, 12 or 13 minutes. List IO. Music licensing reimagined. Licensing reimagined. Did you know that your head is not normal? No one's is. Head shapes are as unique as fingerprints, so choosing a helmet that's custom to you is the best way to keep you safe while playing derby. 
A lot of us have spent most of our derby careers wearing a helmet that's the same size shell, whether you're a size small, medium, large, or extra large. One size fits all doesn't work for our feet, and it definitely doesn't work for your head. Roller derby helmets are designed to absorb and disperse the force of impact using EPS foam, which is scientifically designed to fit close to your head, allowing it to protect your head by crumpling or compressing upon impact. So here's the thing. If your helmet size is a small, but you're wearing the same shell size as your teammate who's an XL, not only does it look kind of funny, the functionality of the EPS foam and how it disperses impact energy is compromised. So no matter how much foam you stuff into your helmet to make it stay put, you're more at risk for head injuries, putting you at risk. The Triple Eight Certified Sweat Saver comes in better shell size options than our leading competitor, giving you the highest level of protection upon impact. Music licensing reimagined. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music license List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. Did you know that your head is not normal? No one's is. Head shapes are as unique as fingerprints, so choosing a helmet that's custom to you is the best way to keep you safe while playing derby. A lot of us have spent most of our derby careers wearing a helmet that's the same size shell, whether you're a size small, medium, large, or extra large. One size fits all doesn't work for our feet, and it definitely doesn't work for your head. Roller derby helmets are designed to absorb and disperse the force of impact using EPS foam, which is scientifically designed to fit close to your head, allowing it to protect your head by crumpling or compressing upon impact. So here's the thing. If your helmet size is a small, but you're wearing the same shell size as your teammate who's an XL, not only does it look kind of funny, the functionality of the EPS foam and how it disperses impact energy is compromised. So no matter how much foam you stuff into your helmet to make it stay put, you're more at risk for head injuries, putting you at risk. The Triple Eight Certified Sweat Saver comes in better shell size options than our leading competitor, giving you the highest level of protection upon impact.
music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music license List IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Music licensing reimagined. that your head is not normal. No one's is. Head shapes are as unique as fingerprints. So choosing a helmet that's custom to you is the best way to keep you safe while playing derby. A lot of us have spent most of our derby careers wearing a helmet that's the same size shell, whether you're a size small, medium, large, or extra large. One size fits all doesn't work for our feet and it definitely doesn't work for your head. Roller Derby helmets are designed to absorb and disperse the force of impact using EPS foam, which is scientifically designed to fit close to your head, allowing it to protect your head by crumpling or compressing upon impact. So here's the thing. If your helmet size is a small, but you're wearing the same shell size as your teammate who's an XL, not only does it look kind of funny, the functionality of the EPS foam and how it disperses impact energy is compromised. So no matter how much foam you stuff into your helmet to make it stay put, you're more at risk for head injuries, putting you at risk. The 888 certified sweat saver comes in better shell size options than our leading competitor, giving you the highest level of protection upon impact. List IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Hey, 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 a minute and a half until Derby starts again. So woo, excited. Woo. This has been such a great game to watch. That's like, right. I got to put on my headphones so I can hear things, but <laughs> it messes with my flower crown. Right. I know. I'm like, I don't want to mess up my hair with the headphones, but found a way. Um, we have had a pretty low penalty game for honestly both teams. Uh, 
yesterday elevated had was getting into some penalty trouble in their game against uh, Boulder County and everybody's playing clean today and Arizona is doing well as well yeah just a, a couple skaters on Arizona do have three penalties but you know they got seven so six of them are kind of gimmies it's just that last one you really want to hold on to and then uh, over on the elevated side those seven penalties are spread out amongst seven skaters so no one on elevated with more than one penalty as we go into the second half of the third fourth place matchup here at monsoon madness in lovely albeit super 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 hot mesa arizona And it's the final countdown. Can I do that on the mic? Will that get us the stream cut down because of music? <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, and there we have that five second call. Our second half is off and we have Kiwi jamming against Fighting Girlfriend for Elevated. Fighting Girlfriend finding a lot of momentum and pushing right up to that. Uh, to Clover 2020, Clover Cup 2025 pivot line, and Kiwi needs them right there. We have two strong packs. And it looks like Sunny Ono is trying to give Kiwi a little bit of offensive help, but they are pushed to the outside, so having to recycle back and try again. Arizona has just got such a strong tripod holding Fighting Girlfriend. Uh, trying to get some offensive help from Killer Queen, but Kiwi now just has one blocker to beat up front, but that momentum is going fast, so there is the whole pack right there again. And there you go, almost a whole track, but Kiwi is out for lead and fighting girlfriend just a few paces behind. And that took almost a full minute to establish lead in this jam. All right, well, quick hit and call, but no points for either team on this jam. So we will head into jam two. Whoa, my Minnie Mouse mic fell over for a second. Whew, my memories. Anyway, we are ready now, as Punky said, for jam number two. Axel for Arizona wearing that star and just like sidestepped, high stepped sideways through the elevated blockers, able to pick up lead. Five though, putting the pressure on, matching up there with Mimi Mahler. Now past Mimi as Mimi starts to bridge, working on Babe with that bridge. And excellent job by Soth and Phoenix to really slow down Thighs and call off four points picked up by arizona two by elevated on that jam great job by elevated to get their jammer out and back around quickly and snatch up those two points right before all four whistles blow all right it looks like we have gemini for elevated jamming against mecca for arizona but before we get to see that, we are going to have an official timeout. Just kidding. Just a short little one. It was a mini timeout. All right, Jam is on, and we are moving backwards behind our Rehab Lab Arizona Jam line. But... Looks like Mecca is finding some momentum, pushing up that straightaway with some offensive help by our birthday girl, Raging Bajan. And with one to beat, Mecca picks up the jammer. Gemini star in hand is getting recycled back on the inside by two by fours, coming up with intensity as Mecca is now oh. looking to complete some score, some, some points, tries to take an apex jump but is unsuccessful looking to see if she needs to recycle or not decides to play it safe and go back to avoid the penalty
elevated tr tripod doing a great job of slowing Mecca down as Arizona continues to hold Gemini in the back. He is getting some offensive help from Harley Darling, but it looks like Arizona now has a power jam in their favor as Gemini picks up a penalty. Great footwork at the top as Axel and Mecca face off. All right, and Mecca hears the calls from the bench to call the jam as Gemini stands in the box to give Arizona a power start. Man, that was like a blocker clinic out there on how do you um, manage the track and prevent that jammer from getting out during a power jam. Elevated doing such a nice job of holding back um, jammers or blockers from Arizona so that they really couldn't offer any offense during that time as Mecca was battling out against two of the elevated skaters. And whistle blows, that's Frida with the star and out very quickly. Cannot give Frida any space because she'll see it and then be gone before you even know what happened. So nice power start. Excellent job by Arizona taking advantage of that. And Gemini now out of the box and back on the track. Knocked out by Mimi Mahler, getting recycled as Frida threw on a scoring pass. Adds four to the scoreboard. Skating around very quickly, looking for more. A little bit of a jukey juke there coming in and then just goes in the middle and is through for four as Amanda Jamadinia picks up a, uh, I think that was a multiplayer call and goes to the penalty box, the 187 penalty box. Gemini just getting the business there from Mimi Mahler, unable to really make a lot of progress in this jam. Elevated, looking to offer some assistance to their jammer. And in the meantime, Frida able to skate by pretty easily. Mimi Muller going to the penalty box. 45 seconds left in the jam. Frida re-engaging with the pack, looking to score some points. Gemini. Trying to find some space, getting some assistance there. Ooh, nice jump there by uh, Farida. And four more points. Gemini now out of the pack. Gonna put that helmet cover back on and be ready to score points when she gets back. And Mimi Mahler out and on the track. Just moments left here in jam number four in the second half of this game. 20 points scored so far. There's a whistle. See if there's more. Three more added to that score. That is a massive 23-point jam for Frida and Arizona rising. That is the highest scoring jam of the game so far. In fact, of the day. Ooh, exciting. So far. And I think that is Arizona's second 20 point jam. It was is the first one also, Frida? It, that or was Satan. That was Satan, right. That first one, the 20 points. It's tall jammers. Get them mixed up. <laughs> yep, it's true. And they, they, they both favor the, um, you know, those leggings and yep, the, those legs, the crop tops <laughs> and, you know. Oh, we do have an official timeout. This official timeout to you brought is brought to you by Triple Eight, revolutionizing roller derby safety with cutting edge technology and unrivaled designs. Stay protected with Triple Eight. Thanks to Triple Eight, sponsor of Arizona Roller Derby. Also, shout out to Clover Cup, the most epic roller derby event of the year. Clover Cup 2025, hosted by the Dallas Derby Devils. It's coming up. Join them as they celebrate two decades of derby excellence. You can find out more at clovercup.com. All right, going into this next jam, we have uh, Gail Satan jamming against Rekka for Elevated All-Stars. Both teams have one blocker in the box, so starting with a 3-3 pass. 
and come in quick up to that Clover Cup 2025 pivot line. And Satan does clear the pack, but it was a no pass, no penalty. So there is not an established lead. Um, however, Rekka did remove the star. So we're going to get another two minute jam in this game. And we now have an empty 187 penalty box. So all of our players are on the track. And Elevated has completed a star pass to Pivot Axel, who is now our jammer on record. There's some great juking by Axel, who's able to stay on the track to keep pushing through this Arizona tripod as Satan is hit to the outside and run back by, I believe that is Captain Kelton Fernal. Yeah. All right, and there's Monroe with some offensive help for Satan, who almost sneaks on the inside, but puts one toe out of bounds and has to run it back as Axel is able to complete that initial pass as well. And there goes Satan with four more points on the board. 18 seconds left in this jam. And Axel is looking to see if she can score some points for Elevated as well. All right, here's Satan with some offensive help in those last couple seconds of our jam. Let's see what the final tally is. Looks like it's going to be a 10-3 jam in favor of Arizona. Don't forget to vote for tournament MVPs. Um, see a link in the chat in just a moment. Give some kudos to all of these skaters putting in work this weekend. And Kiwi wearing that star for Arizona, fighting girlfriend for Elevated, fighting girlfriend pushing to the front, getting uh, caught up by Pikachu, Phoenix, and Babe. Babe now dropping back to bridge as girlfriend is out, picks up lead for Arizona Roller Derby, or for Elevated Roller Derby. Girlfriend getting to the outside lane, four points added to that score. And Kiwi picking up a penalty. Kiwi had taken off the helmet cover, but still in her possession. So this is a power jam. Power jam. This is a power jam for Elevated Roller Derby. And eight points so far on the scoreboard, Elevated Blockers setting up to offer some assistance, kind of getting a little caught up there as a couple skaters fall down. Get right back up though, everybody looking good. Staying safe here on day number three. Ele um, fighting Girlfriend though has been effectively held up by a strong combination of Arizona Blockers. And now both teams packed, catching up with each other. Phoenix with some nice inverted blocking there, being joined by Sunny Ono now. Also, Babe Tovin getting in on that blocking action as the pack starts to get spread out. Babe drops back to uh, Bridge and Girlfriend out for four. Phoenix picking up a penalty and going to the 187 penalty. That's a directional call in the penalty box. There has been a star pass to Sunny Ono and Jam ends three points picked up on that last scoring pass by Fighting Girlfriend. So a beautiful 12 point jam by Fighting Girlfriend and Elevated Roller Derby. That is their highest scoring, no it's not, second highest scoring jam so far this game. They did have a 20 point back in Jam 14 in the first half. Team timeout. Team timeout brought to you 
by Rehab Lab Arizona. Whether you're struggling with pain or looking to enhance your athletic performance, you need a doctor who cares about your goals and will treat you the way you want to be treated. Dr. Ben uses his wide range of skills to help weekend warriors and pros alike move better, move stronger, heal faster. Go to RehabLabArizona.com and book an appointment today. All right, and we are back to the action with Axel jamming for Arizona Roller Derby and Lost in Your Thighs for Elevated. And it looks like Lost in Your Thighs finds an opening in the center, picks up a lead jammer as Axel finishes that initial pass. All right, Lost in Your Thighs is here on a scoring pass. And so is Axel, so let's see how this all shakes up. Arizona does have one blocker in the box, so they are focusing all their efforts on defense, but Elevated does have a full blocker contingency, so is able to spare Captain Nine uh, to hit some offense. And, ooh, got an apex jump there, and it was successfully completed. And so that's another four points for Lost in Your Thighs and Elevated. Oh, and it looks like some refs saw that there was a cut, and so Lost in Your Thighs is going to head to our 187 penalty box as Rage Invasion jams for Arizona, taking a star pass. A little jam for the birthday girl. Arizona looking to complete some offense to help Rage get out, and it is successful, picking up all four points, continuing to skate. Lost in Your Thighs has now been released from the penalty box and is back on the track. And that is going, the jam is going to come to a natural conclu conclusion, and it's going to be a tie jam, 8-8 eight, eight for both teams. All right, we are now getting ready for jam number eight. There is a time out. Looks like an official's timeout, so we'll just play some music.
All right, we are back into the action, and that's Rekka jamming for Elevated up at the Clover Cup 2025 pivot line, and Mecca for Arizona. Um, we do have one blocker in the box for Arizona. And that is a lead for Rekka. Um, oh, but actually it looks like there was a cut call. So Rekka is leaving the track to head to the 187 penalty box and lead is still open. All right, and there is Mimi looking to give some offensive help to Mecca, as well as Just Monroe. It looks like she's trying to fight on the outside, and has two blockers to beat, and pushes them out, completing that initial pass. And let's see what the... Oh, all right, she has not been designated as lead by the officials, so I guess we're going to be here for two minutes, folks. And Rekka is out of the box, completed uh, initial pass, and is now scoring eligible. Big hit from Axel on Elevated to the outside, recycling Mecca all the way back as Arizona looks, down, looks to slow down Rekka on the scoring pass. Got a great tripod of Mimi, Axel, and Just Monroe holding Rekka, slowing Rekka down at the top of the straightaway, again approaching that pivot line. And with one to beat, the jam reaches its natural time conclusion. Lots of love for Axel from Elevated in the chat in the chat right now. Doing great work. Yeah, Ax Axel just it, it, with some amazing track awareness, always right where she needs to be, no matter what happens. And Arizona Rising has called a timeout. This timeout brought to you by our volunteer sponsor EG's take it easy have an EG this month's flavor is monsoon stop in and cool off well that was the August flavor I think it's probably changed because now it's September 1st but um, you never know sometimes they do have it the next day you can always ask it's bright 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 blue and it's definitely will change the color of your face <laughs> so it's and it's super sweet that's my review. I tried it. <laughs> Very official. <laughs> yes. Being a Southern Arizona gal, EG's originating in Tucson. So it was always a big deal to go to Tucson and get an EG's. You know what else is a big deal? Element. Stay salty. Drink Element. Try some here at Monsoon Madness or find yours at drinkelement.com. And that whistle means the timeout has come to an end. All skaters on the track, so nobody in that 187 penalty box. And jam on it, fighting girlfriend, wearing the star for Elevated, Frida for Arizona Roller Derby. Frida right up on that line, on the inside line, kind of with a lean back, and then hops on over to the outside lane, then gets sucked right in to a tripod of elevated blockers. Monroe rolling back, considering some offense, and goes for it. Breaks things up, but elevated blockers reforming so quickly that Frida not able to get out yet, but just two now, and a cut track being called on. Oh, Frida picks up that cut track call, and that means this is a power jam. Meanwhile, in other news, Fighting Girlfriend knocked to the outside and recycled back way past that Rehab Lab Arizona jam line and starting all over again. Arizona blockers looking to keep her from making any moves, but uh, number 45, Nikki Six Shooter getting in there and opening space so that Girlfriend is able to get out and does pick up lead after about a minute of jam number nine. Fighting Girlfriend now looking to score some points. 
passed at least one as Frida returns to the track from that 187 penalty box. Frida looking to find some space, going to the outside and passes it to Sunny Ono. So successful star pass, new jammer is Sunny Ono. Sunny putting on the pressure. Powering forward, returns to the pack, looking to get some points. Knocked to the outside and uh, did not come in behind all of the elevated skaters that were ahead of her. So gets a penalty that sets up a power start and a full 30 second power jam as we go into number 10. So elevated going to have the advantage here as we start this jam. It looks like at the end of that jam, Arizona also lost a blocker to the box. So they will be hanging out in the 187 penalty box as Losting Your Thighs takes on Mimi and Phoenix, who out of play. And Losting Your Thighs picks up a lead jammer call. All right. Mimi Mahler up at the top, hold, slowing down, lost in your thighs. And also picking up a penalty, so heading to the box as Babe is the only blocker on the track for Arizona, but now is joined by Sunny Ono as jammer and Razorcat as blocker. And Razorcat, unfortunately, also picks up a penalty, so is heading back to that box, once again leaving Babe Toven as Arizona's only blocker. Oh, but just as I say it, Phoenix is also released now, looking to help out her friends. Elements, or excuse me, elevated <laughs> uh, blockers are doing a great job of sticking together and slowing down Sunny Ono, who is Arizona's jammer right now. And just as Mimi Mahler, who is pivot for Arizona, returns to the track. So we'll see if we can get some momentum going. This is already a 20 point jam for Lost In Your Thighs. Oh, Ed, who unfortunately has picked up a cut call as well. The 187 penalty box is just seeing a lot of action in this jam as Sunny Ono is still fighting against elevated blockers back at the Rehab Lab Arizona jammer line. All right, and the time runs out. Jam is over. We end that jam with elevated jammer still in the box. So now Arizona will get a power start. But that was a 23-point jam in favor of Elevated. So that is, that's the second 23-point jam we've seen in this game today. Yeah, each team recording a 23-point jam, showing that when they get the chance, those jammers can really make it happen. So 23 points for Fighting Girlfriend and Elevated. Breaking that century mark, takes that score to 106 to 143, really narrowing the gap between the two teams with eight minutes left. That's 28 point difference. And you know, when you can get a 23 point jam, you can make up 28 points pretty quickly. So we'll see what happens here in jam number 11. Remember that after party tonight at the Brass Tap in, uh, in Gilbert. So uh, look it up. Be there. Also, make sure you get all your merch. The Merchity Merch Merch. And we're just about ready to start. Officials getting back in place. And then I believe we will hear that whistle. Let's see. Oh, it looks like the there was a call overturn. Oh, okay. 
And now we do have an official timeout, but we have a clear 187 penalty box. Uh, so, and two jammers on the track. So it looks like we'll have a full, full packs from both teams. Interesting. And also awesome because quite frankly, it's more fun when everybody's on the track. Um, penalty, a little bit of penalty trouble after that last jam for Mimi Mahler. Mimi is at six right now, eight minutes left in the game. Nobody else on either team in any kind of situation. Nobody's even close. So fingers crossed it stays that way. And Gail Satan wearing the star for Arizona Rising, able to get out very quickly. Meanwhile, Gemini battling at the back of the pack, gets knocked to the inside, recycled, comes up against Phoenix two by force, and Monroe with a little bump out to the inside as Satan scores four points for Arizona Rising. Most everybody's still between the jam and pivot line as the star is passed to Horticia. And Horticia, now jammer for Elevated. Satan picking up a penalty. So this is a power jam. Power jam for Horticia and Elevated. This will be a full two minute jam. First penalty picked up by Gail Satan. And Horticia knocked to the outside, being recycled back into turn two by two by force. Phoenix and Monroe getting in there with some blocking. And an excellent job killing that penalty by Arizona as Satan is on the track through and adds four more points to that Arizona score. Eight points so far in this jam, just under 30 seconds left. Horticia Adams still attempting to get through this pack and add some points. This is a scoring pass for Horticia and Elevated. Oh, man, that was super fun to watch there with elevators blo elevated blockers just pivoting around like a almost a full circle there as they stayed right with Satan and points four points for both teams on that last scoring pass and right as the whistles we're going to conclude the jam. Uh, it looks like Horticia Adams picked up a penalty as well. So now Arizona's gonna get that power start. A flippity flop. All right, and it's Kiwi for Arizona wearing the star. And And that's Amanda Jamininia really giving Kiwi some trouble out the back, but able to get some momentum and is now working through trying to beat that tripod as Arizona blockers just work to hold Amanda Jamininia in the back to try and save Kiwi. And with some offensive help by Pikachu and Babe Tovin, Kiwi is out for lead just as Horticia enters the track from the penalty box for her initial. star pass for Elevated to Captain Kells Inferno as Kiwi calls the jam. Looks like an Arizona skater had a equipment malfunction. So taking care of that situation, all good, all good. Getting ready for jam number 13. Four minutes left in the game. Score 149 to 110 in favor of Arizona Rising. There was a point 
in this game where that score differential was much, much bigger than it is right now. Excellent job by, um, by Elevated coming back. At one point, there was, oh gosh, almost a 60 point difference in the score. So well done by, by Elevated to just stay in this game and keep those points close. Axel for Arizona Rising out first, does pick up lead. We've had a star pass to Axel from Elevated. So it was an Axel-Axel matchup there, uh, resulting in two points picked up by Arizona. Great job by Axel to uh, hold Axel <laughs> to just two. All right, it looks like we are going to have an official review. And it was called by Arizona, so we'll see what the call that they're looking for is and what the officials decide in just a moment. Hey, reminder, get those tournament uh, overall MVP votes in. Clo voting closes at noon. That's right, you heard it here. Voting closes at noon. All right, and we are off for jam 14. That is Fighting Girlfriend wearing the star for Elevated and Frida for Arizona. Frida with two to beat, pushing up the middle, but loses her footing a little bit. And all four Arizona blockers are working to keep Fighting Girlfriend behind as Doom De Doom looks to give some offensive help. And there it is, Frida picking up Lee Jammer for Arizona as Fighting Girlfriend gets some offensive help on the outside from 45 Nikki Six Shooter. Both jammers now scoring eligible, fighting girlfriend right into Arizona's four wall as Frida continues her laps, picking up four points for Arizona. Um, looks like Elevated is losing a second blocker to the box. So Arizona will have a pack advantage as fighting girlfriend has now also completed a scoring pass. Amanda Jaminin, you're looking to help 
uh, fighting girlfriend with some offense, but they were both hit to the inside and recycled back as Frida is recycled to the outside. Both teams are really slowing down the defense right now. And we now have a clear 187 penalty box as all of elevated blockers are now back on the track. Fighting Girlfriend continuing to fight against Arizona's blockers hit to the outside by Razor Cat and everybody's moving back as the time runs out. Let's see what the tally comes to. Looks like that is actually going to be a 7-6 jam in favor of Elevated. Well done. Excellent. We are now ready for jam number 15. Geez, 15 jams here in the second half. That's a little bit low showing how long so many of those jams have been going. And Satan out quickly, picks up lead for Arizona, lost in your thighs, looking to get some space and get out of that pack, but slowed down significantly by Phoenix, who is then joined by Velasco and Mimi and Pikachu. Satan through, picks up four thighs out and making an initial pass. As the moments are winding down here in this game, see if any additional points are picked up by either team. Oh, well, that's going to be four. And Satan is calling it off. Oh, or was trying. Hey, we're going to get a full two minute jam here in the final jam of this game to determine third and fourth place in the WFTDA bracket. Thighs adding four more points to that score. About 45 seconds left here in the jam. Here we go. It is happening. People are skating. I like to make up songs. Thighs through for four more. Skating around, gonna have time for at least one more scoring pass as Satan is back on the track and now looking to pass through. Thighs being held up there by Velasco and Phoenix. Velasco's sauce, the sauciest of all sauces. And there it is. That's game, friends. Hey, if you're here in-house, go ahead, head out to that line, give some high fives. This was a battle. Great job by both teams. Stick around for our next game, Open Gender, Cal Squad versus Clown Town. See you back in a few. List I.O.